right. So let me get to this uh, Ken Miller. Based on uh, Schrodinger, now this is Finding Darwin's God, uh, page 207. The DNA molecule is structured in precisely a way that makes the behavior of individual atoms, even individual electrons, significant. We are built upon the micro world, but statistically it all irons out to where we can determine things. For instance, we can determine <clears throat> that I have the power to take this marker, woohoo, and I get to draw. And if I go in a circle, then I'm going to draw a circle. If I want to do a circle, I can do a circle absolutely every single time. It's one of the best geometric shapes I know of. I love studying sacred geometry, so I love circles. I can determine that I'm going to draw circles on the large scale. I know where those atoms of color out of that marker are going to go on that board because I wanted to make circles, and I made circles. On the subatomic level, it doesn't work that way. It can't. It can't. So this is fascinating. When a mutation, that is a mistake in copying DNA, occurs, and it occurs all the time, when these occur, there are no intermediate chemical forms. One of the four DNA bases is changed completely into another base, and that change has a direct and possibly permanent effect on the code script of the gene. And the genes determine, the genes determine my hair was going to be basically straight. The genes determine my funny shape of my ears and my chin, the color of my eyes, the shape of my bones, that I have five fingers instead of four or six, as some people have, uh, that I have one head instead of two, and so on and so forth. The genes make that happen. This has an effect on the code script of the gene. As a result, events with quantum unpredictability, and these include the cosmic ray movements, these include the radioactive disintegration of the elements, they have a half-life, where they, where half of the element disappears over a given time, and various different elements have different half-lives. This is how we know the age of the Earth is very old, incidentally, that uh, Ken Miller talks about that also. And even molecular copying errors exert direct influences on the sequences of bases in DNA, and this determines how we are in physical form. This means that life is built around a chemistry that provides an amplifying mechanism for quantum events, not unlike our randomized mouse, but with far greater significance. Mutations, which provide the raw material of genetic variation, these are also unpredictable as a single photon passing through a differentiation slit, or a diffraction slit. The fact that mutations and variations are inherently unpredictable means that the course of evolution is also. There is no determinacy to what kind of creativity and abundance and form and shape is ever going to happen. Not only we are free, but the entire world is free to be creative, to express itself in whatever ways work. Darwin said there's a grandeur to this view of life. That's utterly astonishing. I think it's very interesting. Page 208. Quantum physics tells us that absolute knowledge, complete understanding, a total grasp of universal reality, will never be ours. It is impossible. Life is organized in such a way that its behavior is inherently unpredictable also. And herein is our freedom. We can freely choose to be whatever, whoever, or however we want to be. 
The mutations and genetic interactions that drive evolution, these are also unpredictable, even in principle. God does play dice. The true materialism of life is bound up in a series of inherently unpredictable events that science, even in principle, can never master completely. God has created our lives with complete freedom. This was from the LDS theological viewpoint. This was the famous war in heaven. Satan wanted to take away the agency of man. And that's what caused the war in heaven, in our theology. God said, no, their agency, their freedom is more important than everything else else. So he created us free. There's the miracle. God is so determined to allow us our freedom and that way we can meaningfully worship him instead of being forced to or we can reject him. We have our choice. It has nothing to do with evolution being Satan's tool. Evolution is the engine of creativity and differentiation in life. It is the essence of the creativity of God giving all of this its freedom. It is God given. Now that's a theological stance. The atheist will say, well, there's no God. The believer says, sure there is. It's just that he is seriously determined to allow us to be free. That's Ken Miller's approach. Proof of God? Not at all. Uh -uh. It, can atheism, can evolution prove God doesn't exist? No. They say, well then why is God, who is benevolently in love, loving, and so on and so forth, why is there so much evil, hate, and pain, and misery in the world? Because he's allowed us our freedoms. And that is part of the prize. He's not going to take away the meaning of our life by coming down every two or three minutes and controlling all of the events in the world. No, this is true freedom. Very profound, very interesting. And here is one of the most profound insights of Ken Miller that I've ever read. Actually, let me, you know what? Yeah, circles upon circles upon circles. Let me uh, let me erase these real quick. Oh, heck with it. Forget it. Ignore the circles and look at me, will you? Golly, I'm trying to make this a decent video and I can't do it very well. The Deists. I'm on page uh, two sixteen of Miller. Gosh, that's too that's too close. You don't want to see me that well. Ooh. The deists, the creationists who reject any notion that God is unable to act in the world today, indeed Christianity like Islam and traditional Judaism regards the continued personal activity of God to be an essential element of belief, of course. So let's step back a bit and think about this. He's talking about those who reject evolution. As a matter of unshakable faith, they believe that God can act in the world at the present time. Okay, that's my belief. Can we prove it by science? No, we don't have to. It's irrelevant. It's a belief, okay? That presumably he can work his will in any way he likes. Okay, do you get that? He can work his will in any way he likes. I've got squirrels running around outside. With power or with subtlety. Okay? God can work subtly as well as powerfully. By works of nature or by the individual actions of his creatures. This can all be seen by a believer's viewpoint as God working. That's just one way to see it. The very same people bowing to the explanatory power of molecular biology and biochemistry would also agree that life today can be understood as a holy material phenomenon. Okay. Page 